episode 73 of the Potter Discussion. I'm your host, Oscar, and here on the Potter Discussion, we discuss some of Harry Potter's deepest and its darkest theories, tidbits, and little easter eggs you might have missed and you probably did. Today's episode is a long-awaited edition. This is the Dumbledore Scheme 4, the Goblet of Fire, and boy, was this story section, I couldn't think of book in the in time, but the fourth book was really a um, quite an adventurous year for Harry. He faced Voldemort, and it was kind of his first real encounter. And I know that he sums a baby, and in the first book, and technically in the second book, not in the third book, but the fourth was really his actual first encounter with what Voldemort was and what he did. I think in the fourth book, he really learned what Voldemort meant, what, what the name is, and why it's so horrible what happened and all of the like why 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 people are so scared of just saying Voldemort's name and how bad things were before the you know in the dark ages I don't know what, what they call them but yeah but Dumbledore I might add was very active as well he had his own agenda that he really wanted to fill and he filled it uh he did have a couple of roadblocks which we will go over but in the end, he did get his mitches across, so this is the Dumbledore Scheme 4. Let's do it. Dumbledore. We all know the guy. He's smart, crazy, a genius, off his rocker, brilliant, and smart. You get the picture. One of the strangest things about him is the way he thinks. With Dumbledore, if you ask for a grocery list, you might get one. In two years, I might add. Dumbledore thinks very far ahead, but in this situation, that may work in Dumbledore's favor. Voldemort is the main antagonist in how Dumbledore sees things, so they are always bumping heads. The fourth year was especially important for Voldemort, because that was the year he planned to make his big return. The way Voldemort saw it, he was the absolute most powerful person in history, and his return would bring the ultimate light everywhere. That isn't exactly true, but Voldemort himself did believe it. That meant the rest of humanity was worse off for it. The fourth book was when Voldemort thought that the entire process would start. There were so many things and so many people to move, the Goblet of Fire was one of the most hectic years yet. And Dumbledore still managed to make that year something it could never possibly be. How did he do it? Why did he do it? Well, the answers for every question you might have are coming up on the Dumbledore Scheme 4. Let's do this. The way Dumbledore did things in the fourth year was very different from the way he had done things previously. There were many events that year Dumbledore didn't want to happen. Just to name a few, Harry getting picked to be the fourth champion in the Triwizard Tournament and Voldemort coming back. In other years past, Dumbledore focused on more of a practical approach to teaching Harry the necessary skills. But in the Goblet of Fire, Dumbledore simply couldn't do that kind of thing. Because of the issues mentioned, Dumbledore had no way of putting into use the things he intended. With the death of Cedric Diggory, the scheme Dumbledore devised beforehand would not have worked. The purpose of that year became something entirely new. The speech Dumbledore gave at the end of that year tells us everything we need to know. Here it is. There is much I would like to say to you all tonight, but I must first acknowledge the loss of a very fine person who would be sitting here enjoying this feast with us. I would like you all, please, to stand and raise your glasses to Cedric Diggory. The speech continued on for quite a while, but the message stays the same. We can only be strong as we are together. And we are only as strong as the weakest link. 
So, what does this mean? Well, that is what Dumbledore wanted to say for the whole year. That is the Dumbledore scheme. Without a practical advance, there was an emotional lesson the student body and Harry needed to learn. Being together and working in unity will always be better than working apart. That's it. And that is very Dumbledore. In the later years, we see that being a struggle. Dumbledore might have noticed what was going on and decide to act. But the fourth year came too fast, and Cedric was killed before Dumbledore's advice took effect. And that is it. That is a Dumbledore scheme, and personally, it makes a lot of sense. Because of all the things that happened that year, there was no way Dumbledore could have done something that would have helped the students in uh, you know, teaching them a spell or arming them with something other than a lesson that they needed to learn about something very Dumbledore-y. And being together, you know, being in unity and working together, that's like 100% Dumbledore. But with the death of Cedric, that really brought out the problem that that was having, about how the students couldn't cooperate together, and with Voldemort on the rise, they had to pull together something real fast in order to stand a chance at Voldemort. But this, I think it's mostly between the the staff and Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaw against Slytherin. And I do include Snape in the staff, and because we do learn that he is very much on Dumbledore's side and not so much the Slytherins. He might f- uh, favor them in terms of points and tensions, but he definitely does not favor their what they're fighting for, which is really the important part at the end of it. And Snape is also a really important character in how the story unfolds. He really helped the way Dumbledore could run things, and he made the year more of a actual year, you know. Another interesting thing Dumbledore did, I guess you would call it, is hire the supposed Mad-Eye Moody. And I think, I don't know, this is a little tricky because we don't have any background on Dumbledore's thought process and there's really no way of telling if Dumbledore knew he was hiring someone other than Mad-Eye Moody. But Let's just run through this scenario. So, if Dumbledore knew that Mad-Eye Moody, who he thought was hiring, was actually Mad-Eye Moody, then things might have been different. Voldemort might have had the upper hand in that respect, and Moody, well, I guess you would call him Barty Crouch Jr., would have infiltrated Hogwarts and caused mischief from within. Dumbledore may have figured it out pretty uh, quickly, but it just depends on how and what uh, Barty Crouch Jr. did in that year, uh, depending on what Voldemort told them to do. So, I think the odds are pretty good that Dumbledore didn't know that Barty Crouch Jr. was actually Barty Crouch Jr. and not Mad-Eye Moody. When, he, uh, when Dumbledore hired uh, the supposed Moody, I don't think Dumbledore knew who he was, but I think he figured it out pretty quick, because there's really no way of Dumbledore to know. I mean, he got the call and then came. <laughs> that's that's pretty much it, honestly. So, having that, you know, Moody being hired and then actually not being Moody, Dumbledore is very good at figuring out these things. And as everything goes in these Dumbledore schemes, Dumbledore knows about everything that goes on around here, as Ron has said multiple times in the first book for some reason. <laughs> It's it's only in the first book that Ron says these things. I've been wondering about that for so long. Ron says the word like the, like the the one liners and the famous lines in the first book, and that's like that's it. That's it. So I don't know. I don't know what happened to him. But I mean, I don't know. I say the only other book that he does that is in the third. But that's just because he was left behind from the time turner. He's like, oh, you're you're there, but you're there, but you're not there. Okay, moving on from that. But back to the Moody issue. So, it would have been pretty easy for Dumbledore to figure out that Moody wasn't actually Moody and it was a Death Eater working for Voldemort because of the way that Dumbledore knows everything that goes wrong around here. I'm going to say that every time. And combined with his just general know-how, and he's pretty smart. So, 
He could have saw him like son. I, I was going to say he, he could have sawn right through it, but that's not the right word. He might have seen <laughs> right through uh, what Moody was doing and realized that it wasn't actually Mad Eye Moody and it was someone else. So that's just a really good skill that randomly Dumbledore just has. I don't know. He's maybe it's just like he's just generally smart. So. Having that skill might just be something that he has, and he has that period, you know? <laughs> so, Dumbledore would have very easily figured out that it wasn't actually Moody. In the second scenario, Dumbledore did know that uh, Mad-Eye Moody was not Mad-Eye Moody. And in that case, Dumbledore would have tried to use it for, adv for his advantage. Because if he knew, he obviously would not have hired the fake Moody unless Dumbledore knew for a fact that he could do something with that whatever. Whatever he wanted to do with it. So, I think if Dumbledore knew Barty Crouch Jr. was posing as Moody, he would have tried to use Barty Crouch Jr. to relay false information to Voldemort. Because that's a perfect opportunity. Voldemort thinks, genius plan, fake fake teacher, get information, send it back to me. But Dumbledore knows. So he gives said Death Eater fake information to relay back to Voldemort. And what do you know? Voldemort has the wrong facts, the wrong time, the wrong place. And he is like a skeleton. So on his big comeback journey, that might not have been... Uh, might not have been so successful if Dumbledore had managed to succeed in what he's trying to do, but maybe he did. Maybe that year could have been much, much worse, but I don't know what we're doing. But I think if I had to guess what which one of these two scenarios was actually the right one, I would say it would be the first. I don't think Dumbledore knew it was Barty Crouch Jr. when he hired him because... He doesn't. Re he didn't really have a lot of information to go on in the first place. I mean, we all know Dumbledore. He may not have figured it out that Moody wasn't Moody pretty quickly, but I think he would have tried to make it more like the second scenario, using that to his advantage. And I don't think it was he figured it out very late in the year. I think he figured it out very very quickly and maybe not from just observing uh obs observing observing moody but also from hearing things that moody might not have wanted uh dumbledore to hear things like him talking to himself or in his in his um little lair in his office but dumbledore has his ways and because he knows about everything that goes on around here <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm never going to stop. Dumbledore m definitely have figured it out that Moody wasn't Moody. It was Barty Crouch Jr. And another uh, interesting point that goes along with that is just Dumbledore's expressions and the attention to detail throughout. Like how, how, how the filmmakers portrayed uh, Dumbledore throughout the story of the movie, it definitely tracked and it made a lot of sense that that is exactly what Dumbledore would do. Like when uh, Harry went into the maze, Moody, or oh, Barty Crouch, I, I keep saying Moody, that's just how I think of him. Uh, Barty Crouch Jr. pointed, you know, with his with his hand, he was like, oh, that's right. And then Dumbledore saw, but he didn't really do anything. He just kind of went, and he made one of those Dumbledore faces, and he was like, mm-hmm. And he moved, just moved on. I think by that point, he definitely knew. And that's why he was so determined when he blasted open the door after Moody took Harry into his office. When Dumbledore blasted up the door and shot Moody, well, not, that came out really wrong, but when he got Moody with a spell, I should say, um, and he was flowing against the wall and all that, that whole thing happened, I don't think Dumbledore would have, you know, really done that. He barged in before he saw Barty pointing his wand at Harry, so he definitely knew by then, before then at least. So, we can imagine that before that situation happened, Barty was pretty much done for, and maybe he knew it, maybe he didn't, so he was just trying to do things the way Voldemort wanted it before it all happened, and it really went downhill. So the bottom line is, Dumbledore couldn't make much out of the situation, so he just taught the students a lesson they couldn't ever learn. 
And that's the end of this episode. Oh, man. Dumb Door Scheme 4. These are really good episodes. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or theories that you would like to hear on the podcast, definitely send me an email. My email is thepotterdiscussion at gmail.com. That is thepotterdiscussion at gmail.com. If you could just scroll down in your podcast app of choice, tap those five stars, or even leave a written review, because it helps other people find the show, and it just takes .3 seconds, and that would really help me out. Also, make sure you subscribe and like if you're on YouTube, comment what theory you want me to do next so you never miss another episode of this exciting content. You will this information to your advantage, and I will see you later.